Farmer protests have broken out across the world, and they're happening in Europe, they're happening in even Canada, they're happening all over the place, uh, except for the United States. Uh, but one big country that you haven't probably heard about has actually some of the largest protests in all the world, and potentially the most impactful. This country has an election coming up in just a few weeks, and these protests by the tens of thousands have marched on the Capitol and essentially laid siege to the Capitol. And it is freaking out the government there. What country am I talking about? I'm talking about India. India, the most populous country in the world, is having a major, major farming problem. We're gonna get into that and a whole lot more. Welcome to the Poplar Report. I'm Steve Poplar, I'm an accountant by trade, and we cover news stories that are not being covered out there by other people. We cover things that are deeply going to affect your life, as is, this is for sure. Uh, major economic issues in the entire food space, uh, prices of food are gonna be directly impacted by this. Uh, this country, India, is the second largest producer of wheat. Second larger, largest producer of rice. Second largest producer of lots of things like cotton, fruits, and vegetables. You can just start tossing all sorts of things in there. And generally speaking, they're the second largest producer of these things next to China. But also they are some of the, they are the biggest exporter of rice, or at least they were until the price, uh, the rice controls came into play where they cannot uh, export any rice uh, below a certain grade. So the very high expensive rices, this basmati rice, jasmine rice, they can export that still, but they can't export any of the cheap stuff because they are trying to keep it so that people don't riot in the streets. But this is causing rioting in the streets because the farmers are absolutely upset. 55% of Indians are employed in agriculture. Most populous country, over 50% of the most populous country are farmers. So you can imagine how a farmer's protest might be bad when half the, over half the country are farmers. If you can just sway all of the farmers to your political platform, you'd win all the elections. And this is definitely uh, something that uh, Modi uh, President, uh, Prime Minister Modi and the BJP, uh, BJP party are definitely taking to heart. They have an election coming up in just a few weeks, sometime in April to May. Uh, they haven't announced all the dates just yet. Uh, but as that comes out, friends, we are going to be seeing a major showdown. The farmers are very upset with Modi. Uh, they, they marched back in 2021 because uh, Modi was pushing some environmental rules, uh, also some rules to strip uh, farmers from their, their ability to retain their farmland. So he was trying to take their farmland and he was also putting environmental rules in that would have made it practically impossible to uh, farm rice. And I don't know if you know anything about Indian food, but uh, rice is kind of, kind of a big deal, right? And the fact that they were gonna make it uh, very difficult for them to uh, farm rice would have hit a lot of these farmers right in the pocketbook. And these are not rich people. If you are in the uh, farming class or if you're a farmer over in India, you are essentially low class. So what's been going on? Well, tens of thousands of farmers, uh, particularly uh, of minority groups like Sikhs, Muslims, and other groups have marched on the Capitol and they have been blocked for the past two weeks because the police and troops, military troops, have set up barricades, razor wire, as well as concrete barricades, and they've manned them um, with, with soldiers and police uh, to block all the roads that the farmers are trying to use to get into the capital city. Does that sound a little extreme? Well, it absolutely is, and it's exactly what's happening right now. They've been using tear gas, water cannons, and lots and lots of batons. If you know anything about India, they don't spare the baton. If you are a low-class person, uh, from their estimation, from your clothing, as well as your skin color, they will beat you to an inch of, within an inch of your life 
just for looking at them wrong. And this happens regularly in India. Uh, they are absolutely brutal with those batons. And when those uppity uh, people of the lower classes start protesting en masse, this kind of starts to scare the government uh, and make it shake to its core. And that's exactly what's happening right over there right now. And so they have gotten into a number of confrontations uh, just in the past week. Pat, a week ago, they actually killed a protester by beating them to death. Hundreds more have been hospitalized due to uh, injuries they've sustained at the hands of the police forces. It's very serious. And the reason why we haven't seen more injuries is, like I said, because they've erected razor wire fences uh, in front of concrete barricades. They're not letting them get close enough to be attacked by the police. And the fact that they are shutting down major roads and avenues and building like a fortress around the capital city is kind of insane when you think about it. Now, the farmers in India don't really have all that many tractors like they do in other places. Other places, when the concrete barriers go up, the farmers get in there with their tractors and just start moving all the barricades. Well, they, they haven't been doing that in India. But it's hard to say exactly what's going on in India because you're not allowed to talk about what's happening over in India. They have gone uh, to each of the social media networks like Facebook and others, and they have told them to stop covering it completely. They're to ban all coverage of these protests whatsoever under penalty of fines and imprisonment of uh, employees in that country. So Facebook said, yes, sir, and they took down all the posts. You can't find anything on there about it. You can't find it on Google in many cases. Hopefully this doesn't get censored. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I think it's mostly any videos and stuff coming out of India. I don't know if they'll ban someone from the United States talking about what's going over there in India. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not. And in addition to that, the only social media site that has pushed back on this, uh, X or Twitter essentially, uh, said, we are doing this under protest and they published the request from the Indian government, exposing the Indian government for, for banning uh, all content about this. Now, whether you agree or disagree with uh, Twitter actually uh, going through with this, they would have to essentially pull out of the whole country if they were to not go along with this. Um, they have uh, taken the position that if we're forced to do this by law, uh, we will go along with it, but we will protest it whenever it happens. We will let you know that it is happening and we won't do that. So um, I at least respect them for that. I respect them for uh, exposing this from what this is happening. And when you look at other media entities inside India, you see radio silence on this. There is very little, if any, reporting on this whatsoever. It's very hard to get information on what's happening with these protests. But from what we can tell, tens of thousands, we know for sure that a protester was killed. We know that many more have been injured in the conflicts. And, we, and we've seen enough pictures of the barricades that they've built around the city and uh, we've heard from farmers, uh, they're declared intense that they will not give up until the, uh, the government of India starts to honor the promises that they made in 2021 at the previous protests and that they will back down from uh, some of the new things that they're trying to push on the, the farmers right now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but right now the Modi government is in a quandary. Uh, they, they, they don't know what to do about this because, like I said, 55% of the country are farmers. And so they can't be seen as uh, going against the farmers. But on the other hand, if they allow the farmers into the capital, then it will be much more public. They're trying to keep them out of eyesight. They're trying to keep them uh, away from the public eye where, where people can take pictures and everything like that. Uh, there are reports that they're actually jamming cell phone signals and blocking internet connection uh, in the areas where the, where the farmers are. It's getting quite extreme out there as to the, uh, the extent of what they're doing. They're trying to 
um, keep these farmers silent long enough for the elections to take place uh, so that uh, they don't get impacted by this. Uh, the BJP uh, party uh, is a, uh, basically it is mainline Hindu nationalists. So uh, they are, they're trying to build a national temple uh, in, uh, in outside New Delhi. They're trying to uh, impose laws and regulations against minority religions such as Islam, Christianity, um, and Sikhs as well as others. But uh, they're definitely cracking down hard on Muslims. They're cracking down uh, pretty hard on uh, Christians. A lot of the stuff that's being done by their local uh, governments and their local uh, affiliates and such are very much like what, what we saw back in Germany with the brown shirts and stuff like that, uh, or, or in the United States with the uh, Antifa, where you have these, these goons, these unidentifiable goons that are going out there and doing the dirty work for the government, but then the government's like, we didn't authorize that, that wasn't us, we, that's against the law, you can't do that. But then there's no prosecution, there's no persecution, there's no uh, enforcement of the law against these people who are doing essentially what the government wants, but doing it in ways that uh, are uh, beyond the realm of law, right? And so you see that across India, uh, Christian pastors are being beaten every day, Christian pastors are being killed every week, and this is a situation that has been going on for a while, and the local governments turn a blind eye to it all. They never seem to put anybody in jail for these things. Churches are burned on a regular basis over in India. Um, and the, low, the lower class people, by and large, uh, while they may not identify with the Christians, they may not identify with the Muslims, they are definitely feeling the weight of the government's boot on them uh, as India is trying to comply with these uh, New World Order goals, these um, globalist goals of, uh, of reducing carbon emissions and all this kind of stuff like that and shifting to a new economy, they're bringing it down hard on these farmers and they're the ones expected to bear the brunt of this. Uh, so we got that and then we also have the government banning exports of food, which means that the farmers have a lot less places that they can sell their food to. If you're forced to sell your food within the country, you can't, you can't get the higher rate, you know, like maybe over in uh, Thailand or maybe over in Pakistan or maybe another country, they're willing to pay you a lot more for that rice, but uh, you can't send it to them because you're not allowed to export that. And so you've got a lot of these controls that are happening across the board on the farmers that they're absolutely uh, done with. So we got social media clampdowns, we got regular media, media clampdowns, we got brutality against the protesters, we have a very difficult situation for uh, the government of India that they're in right now where they don't want to antagonize the farmers or at least they don't want to be seen as antagonizing the farmers. They want to get reelected so that they can continue their march of uh, Hindu nationalism and and basically converting the economy over to a more more manufacturing based economy away from the farmers and trying to uh, mechanize the uh, the farming more uh, you know some would call it modernization but uh, when you start looking at the uh, the things that are be going on behind the scenes you see a lot of uh, uh, things that are not very friendly to uh, hate to use the word democracy uh, but uh, as, as a country that claims to be a democracy with a parliament and such like that, uh, it's not very democratic. Uh, they are not looking out for the good of the people, but rather they're looking out for the good of the rich and powerful in India, and all of them happen to be of the same religion. All right, friends, uh, that's what you won't hear out there from regular media. Hopefully this doesn't get blocked, uh, but I just want to bring that to you so you're aware of some of the things that you're not hearing on the mainstream media. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out another video for this channel, there's one right up here. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you guys later. Steve Poplar of the Poplar Report, out.